for everybody in the Softball Kingdom crew to be able to talk to you about about our hearts and about what we what we believe and what is so important to us. And uh, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're, we've set up in the bus, and, and the, the weather's kind of moved in on us here on Sunday morning. And it's, it's funny, it seems like uh, the last few tournaments that we've covered that you know, the weather's moved in on us a little bit on Sundays. But you know what? That That's okay because, uh, you know, as far as my heart is concerned, the reason that uh, I come here and, a lot, and most and all the other crew comes here is, is a lot of it has to do with what happens right now. And, and uh, you know, God has provided with us an opportunity to be in a, in, a, in a bus like this and be able to continue to stream this message to you. And so I hope that you get, get something out of it. Um, I think God's put something on my heart for you this morning. And before we get started, uh, I want to open up in prayer. So if uh, you guys will pray with me. Dear Holy Father, I thank you for this day. And Lord God, once again, I just thank you for this opportunity that you've given me, Lord God, to, to share this word this morning. I thank you for the opportunity you've given every single person in this bus, Lord God, to just be here. And, and the blessings that you've given us, Lord God, and as the people that are out there watching right now, I just uh, I pray blessings over them, Father, and that uh, as the word is spoken, Lord God, it's not about us, it's not about me, it's not about anything else. It's about you being glorified, and it's about you being lifted up, Lord God. And so we ask that that happen right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit will just begin to just move throughout people's lives right now and just begin to open up their hearts and open up their ears, Lord God. And we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read to you this morning. Um, last week we covered a little bit out of Luke, and, and we talked about the four steps of salvation as it applied, as, it, as we learned it from the, the story of Jesus on the cross and the two criminals that were, that, were, that were crucified beside him. And it's kind of ironic that what I want to talk to you about today, we're, we're, I'm just going to call it storms. And because of the weather that's out there, we've got some storms going on. But it's going to come to you from Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 23 through 27. And I'm going to read it for you. So just, uh, just listen just for a second. It says, uh, Then he got into the boat, uh, he being Jesus, uh, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it, was com- and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Now, this is a great story in the Bible, and it's one, of, it's one of my favorites. And there's so many things that you can draw out of this, and I just want to go over a few of them with you, and, and, and hopefully it can, we can apply it to all of our lives. First of all, in verse 24, the Word of God says, Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm a huge fan of some of you guys, guys out there might have watched it of that show, Deadliest Catch. I love that show. And when, immediately when I read this, I think of that. I think of those, uh, those clips, those waves coming over the boat. And, and, but the cool thing about this is it says without warning. And I want to apply this to, some, to, to our, own, our own personal lives. Sometimes without warning, we have storms that come up in our lives. You know, it's like one day we're doing so well, everything's going great. We wake up one morning, and all of a sudden there's a storm. It is without warning. We're in a bad place. We don't, know where the next, we don't know where the next paycheck's coming from. We don't know if we're going to be able to keep the lights on. We don't know if our marriage is going to be able to, to, to continue. We might have an illness in our family. And all of a sudden, we're faced with a storm. And it's just out of nowhere. And as the waves are crashing over this boat, I'm thinking to myself, you know, that's like spiritual waves in our life. I mean, they're just crashing upon us and crashing down on top of us. And we just don't know anything that we're going to do. We're like we're desperate for an answer. And the Word of God goes on to say, but Jesus was sleeping. And what's so, what, what is amazing about this is that sometimes in our life, that's what we feel like. As Christians especially, but especially as non-believers, we say, well, if there's really a God, if, why, why is this happening to me? Where is Jesus? Well, the Bible here says that Jesus was sleeping. Now, the cool thing about it is, is that he was still there. It wasn't like he had abandoned you. He was right there. In another, in another book, it talks about him sleeping on the bow. So... He was there the whole time during the storm, just like in our lives. He is there through in our lives during all the storms. It says, the disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. I can see him panicking. Now, you got to understand, the disciples, a lot of them were fishermen. So this wasn't their first time on a boat in a storm. 
So this was one nasty storm. And they were scared. But the, th- but the thing that they did is they went to Jesus. They went and woke Jesus. Now, the great thing about it is, is that what I get out of this is that Jesus doesn't panic when we have storms in our life. He's not worried about our problems. He's not worried about our financial problem. He's not worried about our addiction problem. He's not worried about any of that kind of stuff. All he wants us to do is to wake him up. He just wants us to come to him and say, Jesus, I'm in trouble. I need you. Uh, Please, Lord, help me through this. So Jesus wakes up. First thing he does is he rebukes him. He says, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Now that's a powerful statement. Because Jesus is saying, listen, I'm with you. Why are you worried about this problem? All you got to do is ask me, and I'll take care of it in your life. So it goes on, and as the story goes on, it says, that then, he, then Jesus got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. 